<laughs> Poor Thor. Of all the MCU characters, I think he's probably had the roughest and most inconsistent run of movies that uh, any of them have ever had. I mean, let's not mince words. Thor 2 was so forgettable, I forgot what even happened in it. And arguably, it had some of the bigger character moments of his character's arc through the movies. And I think um, the MCU uh, and Marvel in general knew that. Because going into Thor 3, Thor Ragnarok, the tonal shift between those two movies was night and day. You know, Thor 3 was bright and flashy, and it had a lot of comedy in it. And I'll be honest, I thought a lot of Thor 3 was funny as well. But buried in that humor is something that a lot of people, some who are a little more observant, didn't notice and... I've kind of come to notice over the years is that Thor's character arc from movie to movie in one and two, one to Avengers to two, that was consistent. And then it jumped to three and it became all over the place. And suddenly, this guy who is supposed to be this thousands of year old uh, stalwart war, uh, Norse warrior ha uh, god, all of a sudden, this guy was the comic, uh, this guy was. Uh, quippy and you know trying to be like Tony from a character standpoint it really didn't make sense it was funny but it really did a disservice to his character because then it kind of became hard to take his character seriously especially in light of the fact that uh, he was not even by that point the MCU had started turning into the MCU and with the intersectional feminism that's present in all of the MCU now Thor wasn't allowed to defeat his own villain he was not. Uh, he technically could not beat his sister. He was not. He did not rise up to become a stronger hero. Uh, he basically turned chicken shit and ran and let some big monster deal with it. And then in Endgame, and then in Infinity War and Endgame, they tried to you know tear him down. And you know that's all well and good for a hero's journey, but tearing him down in in Infinity War only for him to sink even further in Endgame logically made no sense. He didn't just become uh, a, a fallen character, a fallen hero. He essentially became a, a fat slob. Uh, there's no reason he even should have been worthy of the hammer at that point. So now we've come to Thor 4. If you're wondering what we're in for, it's not that hard to see, especially if you've seen the trajectory that the MCU has taken in Phase 4, or as I call it, Phase 4. Now, fair warning, I'm not going to be watching this. In fact, I was hesitant to even want to do a trailer reaction to it, but just the thoughts of what's happened to poor Thor in the uh, course of the latter half of the MCU have just been sad to watch. And Endgame was, uh, he redeemed himself a little bit, but now here we are at Thor 4, Thor Love and Thunder, and the tea leaves have already been read, the interviews that have been given in the past have not exactly left me or a lot of long, longer term MCU fans with a whole lot of hope uh, and frankly at this point I don't think the MCU uh, deserves the benefit of the doubt we'll just wait until it comes out and judge it then no I don't have to do that because they already uh, telegraphed what they're doing in the movie the movie is Thor traversing the galaxy they brought in christian bale as a bad as a bad guy which if you're going to bury uh, christian bale in makeup i sure hope his character is really good because christopher eccleson is a wonderful actor even though by all reports he's a pain in the ass to deal with and they buried him under makeup in thor 2 you probably forgot he was the bad guy in thor 2 because his bad guy was very one note and one dimensional and didn't really have a whole lot to do and they've already said that the goal of this movie was to fold was to fold the introduction of Jane Thost Jane Foster's Thor, female Thor, and I will not call her Thor because Thor is a name, Thor is not a mantle. Uh, and Val the character of Valkyrie trying to find uh, a lesbian queen to share her uh, throne with to the extent that she's seen as a uh, wearing a power suit and uh, is called King in the movie, which is stupid. 
and I shouldn't even have to get into why. I mean, watching the trailer, it's all very visually appealing, and I get that. Uh, if there's one thing that the Thor Ragnarok did that's a, an improvement on a lot of the MCU, it's that uh, the aesthetics are very pleasing and colorful, and the color is something I personally appreciate. There's a couple of shots in the trailer that are absolutely outstanding to look at, even though it's CGI, and it's hard to kind of pull off really good-looking CGI these days. And color was definitely something that was lacking in Endgame. My God, Endgame with its big final battle of gray blobs fighting in brown-gray muck. It, it was like playing Gears of War all over again. Just all the colors saturated and washed out. Not in this trailer, though. This trailer is a lot more colorful. And I kind of appreciate that. And we know it'll be quippy and funny and things like that if there's one thing the MCU does do. It's uh, characters that, that quit, but that's a problem because for so long, ever since the Guardians of the Galaxy, they've tried to make all of the MCU like Iron Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's not what these characters should be. They should not all be firing off one-liners and doing quippy uh, little things. That used to be Spider-Man's gig, and now... Everyone in the MCU, even when there's some big, dark, dramatic moment happening, they can't let it go by without something funny happening. Someone falling on their face, somebody uh, making a cute little one-liner. There's no room for the drama to actually breathe and set in. Uh, they don't have time to sit there and process it. And that was a problem with Thor uh, 3, and that's probably going to be the problem with this one. Because, remember, in Endgame, they turned him into a comic relief character. He was the comic relief of the culmination of all of Marvel's movies up to that point. He was a fat slob. He got to kick a little ass, sure, but, man, he should not. his character arc should not have had him being a fat slob who was the comic relief. He really shouldn't have. But there's one line in particular in this trailer that really bugs me and it's the line he makes it at the beginning which says I need to find out who I am what are you a girl going to college Thor is 2,000 3,000 how many thousand years old and all of a sudden he has to find himself how do you not already know who you are after all the Avenger movies you've been through now it's time to spread your wings and fly into the galaxy, drink some space beer, get some space hookers, find out who you are. You know, like it's a trip through Europe. You can really see the inexperience of the writers and these kind of things when stuff like this happens. And quite frankly, the movie will probably do well. I'm not the kind to predict and say, oh, this is going to flop. I've called a lot of things DOA. The Halo TV show was DOA. That is proving to be stinking up the joint. I mean, at this point, the only people who are still watching the MCU are the normies who will literally watch anything without any uh, critical thought process whatsoever. The MCU stands who freak out and cream their pants anytime they just see their favorite character in costume walking across the stream. These people are so easy to please. You could probably just jingle keys in the shape of these Marvel characters and they would lose their minds. And part of the synopsis that came out today with it says that Thor runs across Jane Foster who inexplicably has his old hammer and is using it. So... We don't even get to see the hero's journey that she takes. Like Captain Marvel uh, and Scarlet Witch and Monica Rambeau and female Loki uh, and the female Hawkeye, all from Phase 4. All these characters, all these, female, these supposedly strong independent female characters, instead of having an actual arc or a journey to go through, they are simply amazing from the start. Because that's how they write these female uh, heroes. They're not, uh, they don't go through a journey and struggle to attain their power. They're already powerful. Their journeys in the movies are just about validation. They're awesome from the start, and their journey is just everybody else sees how awesome they are from the start. Here we have Jane Thor becoming, the, becoming worthy off-screen. 
she's already worthy by the time she gets into the movie. But I gotta feel like if this is Chris Hemsworth's last uh, run as Thor, it's a pretty bad send-off. And unfortunately, the guy really does deserve better. He's probably been one of the most consistent, one of the better parts of the MCU, uh, from at least my perspective when I was a fan of it. And from here on out, it's all downhill. I'm author John A. Douglas. I'll see you next time. And remember, reject mainstream and embrace the independent. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go have a cup of coffee and drop a Thor 4 trailer myself. So be it.